getting remote access to computers. Uh, Darren's done a network install of VNC on one of his computers, and then Harrison showed us how to take access of VNC session using a meta Metasploit. And we've also shown how insecure it is with uh, simple tools like Kane Enable and Ethereal. But talking to Darren, we've he's told me about a, a way to secure it using SSH and tunneling. Right. Now, VNC is inherently insecure. Okay, it does encrypt the password, but it's not very strong encryption. Okay. It can be easily cracked with tools such as Kane Enable, like you said. So yeah. what I'm going to do is use SSH and tunneling to secure that traffic. So I'd explain these things, VNC, okay. SSH, and tunneling to me. Now, if you're just tuning in, you haven't seen the previous segments on VNC. VNC is a remote desktop application. It's a piece of software that you install on a computer that you want to remotely connect to. And then using client software, you can connect to it, and it will allow you to see the display and interact with it with a mouse and keyboard. It's almost like being at the computer, yeah. but remotely. Now, SSH is a way to secure, securely se communicate with the server. Uh, it's normally used to get like shell access oh, to a so computer. Oh, so like getting DOS on a Windows machine or Bash with Linux or something like that? Exactly. All right. right. But one of the cool things that SSH offers is tunneling. And what that allows us to do is take any normal TCP traffic and tunnel that through uh, an SSH connection. It actually encapsulates those packets with encryption so that they're secure. OK. So what do we need to do to prepare our network for this? Right. OK, now, if you want to connect to your machine over like your cable or DSL internet connection, the first thing you're going to want to do is actually port forward port 22 on your router. So that's as okay. simple as logging into yeah. your router and setting up port forwarding. Uh, the second thing you need to do is make sure that on the server, the machine that you want to remotely connect to, you open up port 22 on the firewall. OK. Um, commands for that? Sure. Now, in this example, we're using the Windows Service Pack 2 okay. firewall. And that command to open port 22 would be netsh firewall add port opening tcp 22 ssh. Got Just on. enter in that in the command prompt, and that'll open that port up for us. Okay. Next thing we need to do is set up the actual SSH server. So All right. I'm going to remotely connect to my machine that has the SSH server using VNC. So again, a little ahead, but I want to show something right here. And that is I'm running Kane Enable. Okay. And I'm going to show how Kane Enable will just sniff up that packet and show us his password. So we've turned on our sniffer in VNC, or in Kane Enable. We're going to open up VNC. And as you can see, I'm connecting to 192.168.1.139, yeah. the LAN IP address of the machine in the other room that we're going to connect to. So we'll enter in that, enter in our password. And goes. here we are. We're on my machine in the Hack5 chat room. Well, let's take a look at the SSH software. What, what I'm using yeah, is what a server. Are you using? Yeah. Um, There's various SSH servers you can run. Uh, one of them that's uh, very popular is called OpenSSH, and that will run on Mac, on Linux, on Windows. I, since this is a Windows machine, like this package called Free SSHD because it's lightweight, it's Windows native, and it just gets the job done really easily. Okay. But well, there's still plenty out there that oh, there's you can plenty. find. Oh, there's plenty. Yes. So we've already installed the free SSHD server, right. and it's a really basic installation and information look, on look. The, all the nitty gritties in the show notes for that. So we'll open it up here, and as you can see, the SSH server is running. And what we had to do here is add users. So we go over to the Users tab, and we would click Add. We'd enter in a name, and in this case, uh, for authorization, we'd want to store the password in the SHA-1 hash. All right. We'll give it a password, and Normally, we'd give it a more secure password, but for time, I'll go ahead and apply that. And as you can see, oh, yeah. What are all these different settings here? Sure. Well, these checkboxes say that it's getting this user has access to the shell, in this case CMD, SFTP, which is just like FTP, but it's secure, and you'd use an SFTP client. Nice. And tunneling, and that's what's important. So we'll apply that, and then we'll save and hide this. That's all there is to it on the easy. SSH side. Now, for the VNC, we're going to set up a VNC server. And we've touched on this last episode. There's several different flavors of VNC. Uh, my favorite is actually tight VNC, and that's the one that I'm using right now. You can also use real VNC, ultra VNC, mm -hmm. many others. So we'll go ahead and open up the VNC properties right here. And in, uh, in tight VNC, there's a button advanced. And this is just the most important thing after you set up the VNC server. But uh, we want to check this box. It says, allow loopback connections. So why is that important? Well, what this is, is it's allowing you 
to connect to the loopback. And there's a loopback on every computer. And what that is is your local host or oh, yeah. IP address 127.0.0.1. And what we have to do is tell VNC to let us connect to our machine from our machine. By default, it won't let you do that, because why yeah. would you connect to your machine from your machine? That makes no sense. In this case, since we're using SSH, we're connecting to that machine, and we're going to tell it we want to connect to ourselves. Okay. It's just going to you know, bring it to the other machine. So we just check that and hit OK. Now, if you're using another distribution, such as real VNC, there's actually, it's not as simple. You have to go into the registry, and there is a D word value that you have to add. Uh -huh. And that's in the show notes. All right. So we'll hit OK on that. And we're going to sign off of this VNC session. Now, that was the VNC session that was just done. Yeah, over the plain, TCP. Yeah, not in plain text, but easily cracked. So as we can see here in can enable, we actually have the hash right here. Huh. So all we have to do is right click on this and say send a cracker. We go over to the cracker, and there's our uh, VNC hash. We right click on that, and I'm going to do a brute force attack. I'm going to click start. And it should take just a moment. There we go. And there it is. So I'll click exit, and what here we, we go. Password, Act 5. Act five. Yeah. So now let's do this again, keeping the sniffer running, this time using SSH. All right. So the next step is on the client side, we need an SSH client. And okay. there's various SSH clients. Uh, the right. particular one that I enjoy is called Putty. Putty. It's because it's really lightweight. It's Windows native. It gets the job done. So we're going to open up this, and we need to specify two things. First is the host name. And in this point, since we're already on the LAN, it would be the LAN IP address of the other computer. If we were doing this over the internet, it would be the public IP address of a router. And since we port forwarded port 22, it will allow us to connect to that machine. Okay. Or if you've got a Dyn DNS, you could use that. Yeah. So in this case, it's 192.168.1.139. And then we'll head over to tunnels down here. What we need to do is, for the source port, add 5900, and the destination port, 127.0.0.1 colon 5900. We click Add, and then Open. Now it's connected to the machine, and What's it said, this? well, what it's saying here is that uh, we haven't connected to this machine before, or uh, the key fingerprint of that SSH server isn't in our registry. We haven't cached okay. it. It's going to ask us, do we trust this machine? I know that's my machine, so I'm going to trust it. I'm going to click Yes. Right. And it won't ask me subsequently uh, now. So it's on your computer now and won't mm -hmm. just go back to that. So now we just need to log in with the credentials that we've set up in the free SSHD server. So in this case, username is Arbolf. I'll enter in my password. And there we go. Okay. I've got shell access, but I don't I don't technically need shell access. Yeah, I want to interact with yeah, I want to interact with some of my programs on my computer that don't have uh, shell commands. So we'll go ahead and open up type VNC. And remember, we port mapped 5900 yeah. to 127.0.0.1. So we'll open up that local host in VNC Viewer, give it the password, and there, there we, we go. go. And we're in the chat. Hello, guys. <laughs> so let's minimize this and head what back over Kane? to Kane Enable. Yeah. And look, it hasn't seen it. That's just the hash yeah, from uh, last time. We haven't. New ones. Well, that's the cracker. Hang on. Let's head over to Sniffer, Passwords. Nope. We still nope. only have one hash from when we did it previously. Yeah. And this is really just fundamentals that will work with any kind of protocol. Now, there's okay. various SSH servers. There's various SSH clients. And you can do more than just VNC encapsulation. You can uh, just about anything you could encapsulate with the SSH and secure. For example, right. a few episodes ago, we talked about streaming music. And my favorite way to do that was over Apache. And I was running an Apache server with port 8080. I could just add port 8080, okay. port map it, do the same exact thing, and my MP3s would be secure. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, you know, it, you it's going to add some overhead, though, because it's got to add the encapsulation and the extra headers. So it's not really great for streaming. It's not like really good for trying to play a game through it or something. I wouldn't even bother. <laughs> no. But it is great for stuff like VNC or any other server interaction type stuff. Thanks, Darren. No for problem. For showing us that. Um, Written up a detailed article? Yeah, I've got all the info you need to do to set up the servers and the clients. All the nitty gritty details are in the show notes. Awesome. So that'll be on the Hack5 website in the forums? Exactly. Awesome. And if you'd like to leave any feedback or have any questions, please feel free to post them on the forums.